Greetings and welcome back, everybody. This is Into the Nexus, the podcast all about Heroes of the Storm. The podcast all about that Blizzard game that's getting a lot of headlines. That podcast about that Blizzard game that just got advertised by Blizzard in an email blast for the first time in like two and a half years. Uh, I could be very wrong about that, but I feel like I haven't seen it advertised in an email blast in forever, and I actually got an official email about it. That was long-winded. Hi, I'm Garrett. He's Kyle. We're here to talk about Heroes of the Storm. It's a patch week. It's very exciting. Uh, it's, it's over anyway, Garrett. This was all leading up to the Overwatch 2 announcement today where they officially declared no more 6v6. It's 5v5 now. Uh, that's your big announcement? That, that, that was, yeah, that's what they did. Anyway. No, don't, 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 oh, you're, you're baiting me to be a grump. I'm not a grump. I'm in <laughs> such a good mood. I'm in such a good mood, Kyle. Uh, I've had so much fun in Heroes of the Storm this week. I really have. Uh, I I think I think I had two uh, salty bastards, and like my games have been good. I've won some. I've lost some. The ones I lost, I feel like I learned something, uh, and the the community has been super positive. I'm just having a damn good time. So yeah, cool. I, the, I'm I'm I kind of dump on Overwatch and I I don't I just don't I just don't want to. That's not exciting. That's my take. Uh, you know what is exciting? Heroes of the Storm. I agree. I had an interesting week too. I mean, the community has been very positive. They've been doing their best. I had a game last night with triple frontline versus triple frontline. Our carry was Nova and their carry was Vala, and we all quit, but we all hung out. You know, like it wasn't a bad experience. We all just agreed that this wasn't happening. <laughs> so we all collectively hung out. We cleared, you know, we fought, we played the game, but we knew what was coming and it came rather yeah. swiftly. Yeah, dude, I, I love that. That's, that is a, like a, one of my favorite rare experiences, which is the collective. Oh, we just, ooh, we just got thrown into the grinder. Like the collective recognition of that and because it, it, it does so for me it does so much to alleviate like my my bad feels at the end of a game when we're all like okay okay yeah they they got like a comp and we got uh, nova nova we got, nova. Yeah. We got a nova valera uh, team and yeah it's I don't know, like when, because when you get the opposite, which I feel is more common, which is when you know somebody picks on someone and then everyone just dogpiles and starts fighting. Like I just, I just go, you're you're all idiots. Like 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 the 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 deck was stacked against us. We had a very very slim margin for victory. We didn't reach it. Why why we why we jumping down people's throats? Why we jump down through people's throats? Sometimes the comp is just a little rough. So yeah, I love, I love when that happens. I love, I love when I lose a game and all of us are like, ah, well, at least we gave them hell. I'm having a, a roster apocalypse though. I, I have no idea what my personal project is going to be this season. Hogger nerfs, diva nerfs, Sonya nerfs sort of, but you know, I'm, I'm feeling it, you know? I'm, I'm, yeah, I am. I am too. I'm not, I'm, I'm still playing Sonya. Um, that was a weird, we, we had a weird social, interaction with that Sonya because someone was like immediately like Sonya nerfed and and everyone else is like well she's probably still fine and that person's like I haven't seen anyone else play her at all and that is true though like just dropped off the face of the draft yeah which I'm, I'm fine with because I don't, I don't think I'm necessarily going to prioritize her uh, you know and I, I've only I only played that one Zul game the one with you people can go and watch it as a matter of fact I think you uploaded it um did you it was Towers of yeah. Doom yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I was, where I was, Bali, Vala, multi-shotting my my brains out and just having a grand. Yeah, time. I'm teeing you up to promote your YouTube if you're not picking up what I'm laying down. Oh, by the okay, way. yeah, at YouTube.com/slash Kyle Ferguson. There, there it is. Go. There, there. Oh my goodness, Scott. We need to, we need, we need to have a talk. We need to have a talk. Uh, yeah, I, that, that was the only game with Zul, but I think I, I think I am going to prioritize Zul over over Sonia. Um, but 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 I don't think she got that hurt. I really don't. And so I'm honestly, I I think at the moment. My my take on Sonya is that I'm happy the nerf came because now I I can play her when I want to play her. She's not like hyper contested, not potentially banned, and definitely because for the last six months the other team always had a Sonya player. 
Yeah. I'm not so sure that's the case anymore. I've, I'm totally fine with her as a backup and I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm back. I'm back to being a hipster Sonia, Kyle. And that feels good. I don't know where I'm going. I always end up just back on tank uh, when bruiser's not working mm. or on bruiser when tank's not working. So I know this is like, Oh, Kyle's doing his soul searching again, but I re- like really what it comes down to is I kind of enjoyed my time on Anduin this week. He was really busy and I, fun. I think Anduin should, I, I think Anduin should be my project. I'm not sure he's going to be because it just, don't love the fantasy of being Anduin, but every time, sure. dude, every time you and I play together and we go against a team who gets an Anduin as a, as a, as a healer, I'll set a support. Uh, it's really, it's a really bad time. It's, it's a, it's, he's, he seems to be a common denominator in games. We lose when we go into storm Lake together. Uh, so, and it's, I feel like I'm usually forced on tank, but almost every time I'm forced on tank, Kyle, what happens? It's not that no one will tank. It's that someone goes, am I healing or am I tanking? And I just go on tank. So they end up healing. So I think it would be just as likely that in those scenarios where I'm forced on the tank, I could just heal instead. Cause it's usually me and one other person just being like, I don't really want to do either, but I guess I have to. But so it's I've, a good pile right now too. Like I really like Stukov. Uh, I really like bright wing though. I don't exactly win on her too much. I like Deckard a lot. And I've got like side loves that I know are weird, like Ariel and Alex Straza. But the fact that I've got a solid group of three and emergency Lily Malfurion, I'm I'm kind of digging the idea. Em- emergency Lily, I like that. You know, you, you're going to take a lot of hits out there. There's going to be a lot of splash damage. Maybe I want to be a little more resilient. I, I do want a world where Rhaegar can come back. I don't know what that looks like for him outside of just like, Number tweaks, increases heal throughput. He loses personality a little bit, so I get it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm st- I, I'm open to things for sure. Rhaegar is not on my... Rhaegar is not on my radar. My Rhaegar no, radar is... Radar. Yeah, <laughs> this is, is off. There's no way to make a joke out of that because it would just be Rhaegar, which is his name. The but, dog's gone home. You know, we're having this this deep philosophical conversation here about what we're going to be playing and what our plan is for this season, when in reality, it's clearly pick Vala. I mean, we're assuming she's just going to be permabanned or you've messed up. Yes, uh, that is certainly my my read on the situation. I don't think we've had this quick of a snap, like ban the shit out of it um, in a very long time. Even Hogger, if you remember when Hogger landed, we were all so bad with him that we were like, yeah, Hogger sucks. What a terrible hero. hero. In reality, we sucked. Uh, but this is... But it's, it's different than even like the Li Ming days because we've seen powerful assassins before. It's just that, like Falstad, Falstad definitely showcased this. False deck comes out, W build is nuts, and it's easy to do. You have a reposition, you attach to one person, usually the tank or somebody, and you do absurd amounts of damage, and it looks great on the board at the end. That's another very, very big important part is, you know, false dead splash damage. No matter what happened in the game, you can look at that score screen and say, hey, all right, I'm great. And that's what's happening with Vala. It's just functional. And the W build, multi-shot, despite... Other builds working. Q build is fine. Hungering Arrow absolutely has a lot of assassination quality. Auto attack is good too, but there's this W build simpleness of just hit everybody and then do whatever you want to with the people who are now low. Like a thousand damage a shot in the late game is a pretty great way to decide who's my target. Achoo! Oh, well, May lost a third of her health. Nah, nah, you know, I won't do that. Hanzo lost half its health. Let's go on that guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, do, do we were, we were having you remember we were having a, a a big old laugh at the at the Hanzo just just today we, we for the to let you know how the sausage is made we have a little like pre meet before the show every week and we try to squeeze in a game and we were just looking at the Hanzo like you could just play Vala and just not work so damn hard <laughs> yeah that's got I mean here's Hanzo working his butt off with his fancy bow jumping around aiming all his shots. And Vala is running in circles, half managing her hatred because it doesn't matter and multi-shotting multiple people for great victory. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy. It, it's, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really don't know what else to say. I, I, I was a little worried about this ushering in a double support meta, but it doesn't look like it's going to be doing that. Um, she's kind of good enough on her own. Um, and we're going to we're going to talk about other heroes and whatnot as well. Like, um, I don't want to completely focus on on Vala, but she's definitely the hotness right now. And it's not just because of that new skin. The, the skin is great. And there, we can get a little, you know, conspiracy theory about it. Like, you know, you put out a Tracer Cassia skin. They were really powerful for a while. You put out a new Vala skin. She's kind of a big deal. It It, it is related. And the power might be left in that state to promote the fun and exploration of the hero further. And maybe even to get numbers. Because it's true. She's still made of paper. Like, in our coordinated play games, like CCL which isn't due to announce its hero bans and bugs and all that until Friday, actually. So we don't know if they're going to allow Vala in or anything like that. There's no, so far, there's no known bugs with her, right? She's just... Not that I'm aware powerful. of. Powerful. Uh, Lucio's the big bug right now. His level 20 is taking him down to a six-second cooldown on his uh, hand slap, his high five. Definitely missed that. I've been too busy uh, landing Ws on Vala. Yeah, but... You should, and you should enjoy this brand new thing that is a really, really fun Vala kit. But I do, I do wonder, I am concerned about that state of the game lasting too long, of course. Like, that that's my big gift horse in the mouth right now. We don't have an understanding of what the balance cadence is going to be going forward, and we're all having a lot of fun, and we're willing to admit the fun, but the, these snacks might be unhealthy. If we have too many, it's, it, it's a little crazy. So, so I, you know, I, I haven't looked that much at popular opinion. You always seem to have your finger on the pulse a little bit more than I with that. Um, it, are, is it like official? It has, is, is the, the, the cry of the community that it's W build and that's it. Cause I've seen a lot of, I have seen all three Vala builds, uh, championed like they were facts by different pl- people and different Vala players. Like, whether it's auto-attack, Q-build, or W-build, I am 100% with you. I've tried Q... I, I don't think auto-attack build is ever the... Like, personally, my 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 read is never auto-attack build. Q-build if you're really good, but why don't you just go W because it does stupid numbers and is so much easier to play. And then you can take late-game auto-attack talents anyway for the giant killers and the range and everything you might want to burst a tank down at that point. Like, firing through the tank and assaulting the back line with that much damage just feels great, but the numbers don't really back it up right now. Like, Vala is still going to die to Zero Tools in uncoordinated environments. That's why I brought up the CCL. They're going to have to figure it out. They might have to run that double support, those Medivhs and all sorts of weird stuff like that in order to make this hero just not explode on the battlefield. Her win rate is up, according to our statistics, 5%, which puts her above 50%, like a 52. It's not absurd. However, you put a comp together, Vala's the the engine, they're the fuel of the damage. And yeah, you can feel like it's a bit of a one-sided match. Yeah, and it's, you know, typically when we see successful buffs, like objectively successful buffs uh we still see a dip typically like in the first week in win rate as people who are either haven't played this hero for a long time or returning to it or people who have never played the hero ever are picking it up for the first time it's just like an, an unfamiliarity with the kit right and we're, and we're seeing a, a climb right away like we're three days into this patch being live and we're seeing a climb so yeah to me i it's all but confirmed that fall is just Super, super strong, and the hero to be picked or the hero to be banned right now. Um, so yeah, and I'm—I mean, I've always—I've really, always had a weird soft spot for Vala. I really like Vala's kit. I, I think she's like this quint. She is the poster child of what a ranged assassin in Heroes of the Storm should feel like. So it has, to me, felt very strange that we haven't that like she hasn't been meta for over a year. It feels like really and like it's, truly meta yeah. since double support. She's so snappy that she's very enjoyable to play. Uh, the the hungering arrow kind of has this gamble quality about it as you watch it bounce around. Having multi shot be great is a lot like us dumping talents into Diablo Flame Stomp in previous balance iterations on him. It just shores up the character and makes the button worth pressing. So 
there's going to be a lot of opinions, and and that's why we're having a guest next week. Actually, we can announce Jay Howe is going to join the show, self declared Vala Main, and he's going to teach us all about what's going on there behind or under the hood of Vala. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, she does wear a hood. I've been using the Reaper. I guess the I guess the Reaper skin has a hood as well. I, I'm just I'm just thinking of the skull mask. I'm like, don't you mean under the mask, Kyle? Could be under the mask. The mask, yeah. yeah. Under yeah. under that really cool cape. I think too. It's a fascinating rework in that even the bad stuff or stuff that we might discover one day to be bad is really really fun. Like this week, I did a infinite death siphon, a straight that lasted. The entirety of the team fight, you were there. I probably shouldn't have done it, though, because it lasted so long that I had probably two multi shots I could have fired over the course of that thing. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there. People, you can go watch the VOD because I was just sitting there being grumbly going, oh, I'm pretty sure if you were just unloading multi shots, we would have actually gotten some kills there, Kyle, instead of looking real cool and no one dying. But it was real cool. It, and same it thing was goes for like this, uh, this Caltrops thing, the Acrobat. Two additional charges of vault. Like, that's a lot of hungering arrows. That's really, really cool. If you can aim. <laughs> if you're going to put it all in the same person, if you're actually going to use it. Here's the thing, Kyle. You don't have to aim. You don't. Have to, there's, there's this lovely build where you pick all the pictures that look like multi-shot, and you don't need to aim anymore. It's great. And that, that kind of brings me around to my feelings on Rainer, but we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, yeah. I, overall, so yay or nay on the patch? Do you think it's a good patch or a bad patch? I think it is a very fun patch. It has a lot of new toys to it. And some heroes like Stitches just getting a little sprucing, a little sprinkle of some fun things. Uh, kind of feels like a book, but yeah. Uh, Johanna getting lots of fun things. It's just great content. And that's what we talked about in the past is sometimes balance is just balance and sometimes balance is content. This is a great content patch. Did it change the meta? Once we get over these very powerful heroes, it's not looking like it. Yeah, I well, it changed Sonya, which changes the meta. Yes, the, the Bruiser meta has changed, and we're kind of looking at our top-end players in CCL to say, does this mean tanks are good? Does Arthas come back? Like, who who should we be running right now? That's that is a good question. Yeah, Th to me overall, like I think it's a good patch. It, I think it seems more impactful to solo lane players than anyone else, and I am definitely a solo lane player. So to me, this seems like a wildly impactful patch, especially compared to the last one, uh, which I think was pretty pretty l lukewarm, airing on the set of cold in terms of its impact on the meta. Um, uh, I think it's also really big hit. And miss. I think the hits were big and noticeable, and I think the misses are also quite noticeable. Uh, we'll talk about more about that later. But I, just, I was just kind of curious what your, what your overall thoughts were. So, anyways, before we get into all of that, uh, we want to thank those of you supporting us over on our Patreon. You know, speaking of having Jay How on next week, we do pay our guests, and that is because we are backed by our lovely, lovely patrons over Patreon.com/slash itn. Uh, if you like the show and you want to support us, that's the best way to do so. You don't have to. We're not putting the show behind a paywall. But if you do want to support what Kyle and I are doing here, uh, it does help us pay the bills because this is what we do for a living. So go check it out and uh, you'll get yourself access to our Discord. You'll get yourself an ad-free version of the show. You can sign up for our monthly game nights. It's all kind of perks over there. So go check it out. And uh, this week, we want to uh, give a shout out to uh, C. Michael R., who upped their pledge and claimed our final producer spot, Kyle. Awesome. Yeah, we got a new new producer in town. So, Michael, thank you very, very much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Had a lovely little, little, lovely little chat in uh, Patreon messages this morning. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, and also wanted to reiterate that uh, we are still on the lookout for someone who knows CSS over on Hots Logs. Uh, and if you are thinking to yourself, I know CSS, I'd love to work on Hots Logs. Email tech at hotslogs.com to get in touch with us. That'd be uh, super, super helpful. And now we're going to uh, get into this week's Heroes of the Storm news. We're on, boys! <laughs> Let's liven up this place! Put me to the stage. Stay a while and listen. Oh, Kyle, are we back in the news? We did it. We made it on video game websites. Uh, the Heroes team did it. 
they made it on <laughs> video that's, game that's month. Really, I mean, yeah. as a community, we we support the devs, and they did it, and we we celebrate with them. Uh, there was an official YouTube video for these skins, which looked great, and everybody really enjoyed that. There were articles on Destructoid, GameSpace, GameSpot. Uh, I actually haven't ever said this name aloud, but I see it all the time when I look up video game news. Uh, I've never heard of this website until this exact moment. Dextero? Dexero? Yeah, it, it always, like it always comes up when there's, you know, things will get a little clickbaity, but you know. No, no uh, shade. Well. I just am unfamiliar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, we were making the rounds. Here's the storm getting loud out there and people are enjoying seeing it out there. Now, of course, of course, there are bugs that came with this patch. There are some store issues. Some skins are still missing, but everyone's just kind of eating the goodies and it's going well from the outside in. And I think that's kind of what we have to highlight, at least this week. The perception of Heroes of the Storm has elevated. Us on the inside, we still have our nitpicks. We still want to see little things fixed and we're a little upset that bugs came again with a patch, but we still don't know that next patch cadence. And I really want to wait for that before we go hard on those particular topics. Be welcoming to the newcomers and returning players. It's a yes. big, this is a big boost for our game. It's a big boost. We're going to get a lot of new players. We're going to get a lot of returning players. We can, we can, we can nitpick uh, two months from now. How's that sound? In two Sounds months good. time, I will, I will pick some nits with you, Kyle. <laughs> Let's pick those nits. <laughs> there may be none to pick. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, but yeah. Um, and I, like I made a joke at the top of the show, but it's not really a joke. Like I cannot remember the last time I saw an update to heroes of the storm advertised in an official blizzard email, like an advertising email. Cause I, I get those and like, I have, I unsubscribe from basically anything like that, but not, not blizzard stuff. Cause I, I actually, I want to see what their marketing looks like. Like I purposely do not unsub from blizzard marketing emails. Cause I want to see what the hell they're doing, where their focus is and what they're trying to get people hyped about. And I cannot remember the last time I saw anything relating to hots in, uh, in one of those emails and a big official one came out. Uh, I got it in my inbox yesterday. It's a showcase heroism with new skins and it's got the overwatch heroes logo. And it's got that, that key art that was shown at BlizzCon of all of the overwatch skins. And it really, it really stuck out to me. There was something about it where I was just like, Oh damn, I, I can't remember. Like, and this isn't me memeing. Like, I'm, I still think back to like that damn J. Allen Brack letter where it just felt like it was the end of days. And it's like, here we are two years later and I'm getting official marketing emails about the game. There was also a really nice little interview put up with Keena Brew over on the website all about where the skins came from, what sort of their influence was, a big section about why couldn't this be Bridget? Because Johanna has a mace, a, a swinging ball and chain, and that's not Reinhardt. And there's a big discussion there. So just nice to to see it being broadcast that something's happening with our lovely game here. I, yeah, you know, isn't it? I uh, always oh, forget the correct way. It's like Vegeta. Brigitte, I believe, is the pronunciation oh, or something really? like well, that. You know, that yeah. again shows that I've never listened to it aloud. I haven't I, played. I know the t-shirt. And My wife owns the t-shirt, the <laughs> I eat so I can work out t-shirt, because that's a great thing. Yeah, uh, that w- I didn't think about that, but yeah, that's, I mean, Brigitte, very similar silhouette to Johanna. Very, like, very similar. Re- Reinhardt's just awesome looking. Yeah, I wanted Reinhardt in the game. It's the closest thing we'll ever damn get to it. So, I, it, dude, this was, I was going to say money that no longer belongs to me. I, I believe it was gems I already had that no longer belonged to me. That was, this, I immediately got in and bought the Reinhardt skin and the Vala Reaper skin. Yeah, um, same here. The only thing that stopped me from getting that Stitches skin is that I Still don't think I want to play Stitches. <laughs> so I've got my cuddle bear. I literally learned Stitches, what was it, 2019 spring, and then waited all the way around to the next Christmas so I could get that skin. So I'm set. I got my teddy bear. I actually am surprisingly decent with Stitches. Stitches went ahead because they're way easier to hook when they're running away from you. That's kind of my philosophy. I think <laughs> Stitches isn't, a, stitches isn't an, an ahead hero. Uh, yeah, like you want to be winning. It's so much easier to land hooks, but uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that more later. But it was just, I was just excited. I was excited to see to see heroes getting getting its time in the spotlight because d- damn it, I love this game. <laughs> just love it, and I love the community. Um, so 
Anyways, what's this? A wacky hero skin pack you'd love to make someday? Is this a is this a question? Oh, this is from the oh, yeah. Kinderbrew article. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he was bringing up some of those old sprays like the Shark Haka or Hammerhead Greymane being at the top of his list. Shark Haka would be amazing. Those were years ago. But you know how they like to they make some sprays. They kind of hint at skins that could one day exist. And it's cool to hear that those are still in the minds of the artists. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to see it. There, there's some really cool skin ideas in the in the sprays for sure. It also reminded me like that like Stitch is getting a new skin. It's a big deal. I was looking through his skin. He doesn't have that many. There aren't that many Stitches skins. Interesting. My mind would say otherwise, but yeah, I guess. Oh, you know right. what is it? Because there's some seasonal ones. So right now, if I look at what I don't have, I'm not going to see the teddy bear ones because they're not even available. Oh, there you go. That's what's doing it. Okay. I forgot about that. Yeah, there's certainly some that are way more, you know, hidden. Some heroes could use more love. Actually, Blaze isn't too bad these days. You can still point at Ragnaros, of course, being the ancient punching bag of skin lackage. Yeah, but Ragnaros, like, they've gotten... We've had artists talk about that, which is just, hey, yeah. Ragnaros is really hard. The base Ragnaros was difficult to make, according according to the artists that have, have talked about the process. Uh, he's got swirling fire around him. Like, uh, customizing that's going to got to be a serious challenge. Well, and then things we might not think of, like Medivh. You got to make a whole owl at the same time you make Medivh, and you just probably... Much like the rest of us would, a human thing to do. Oh, well, I'll put that in the side pile. I'll work on something else right now. Yeah, we're going to prioritize, you know, things that maybe aren't as as difficult to do. But uh, let's get in and talk about the, we can talk about the patch outside of friggin' uh, Vala. Although I'm sure we'll come back to Vala when we get the reworks. But um, we didn't get to see experience the new Experience Globe thing on the PTR, but it is now live, Correct. Yes, it is yeah. now live. You may have noticed. Well, I know it's not live, but I was, I was like, remind me if it was on PTR or not. Um, nope, not at all. They couldn't yeah. squeeze it in, I guess. Yeah, which, like, I, I guess we got this as, as fast as possible. If that's the case, then, because it's in, and it, I haven't noticed any issues with it. It doesn't seem rushed. No, I, I think, you know, it, it led to a little bit of conspiracy of like, oh, they don't want us to try it out because we're not going to like it. Oh, that's why like, they're hiding it ever. behind a wall. But it... it I, I do think it's a fascinating exploration of the learning tools. I am enjoying it in kind of like a Mario collect the coins kind of way, like in a in a run my finger over the mobile game, get all the thingies. It, it, it's I see these things in lane and I go, ooh, and I want to pick them up and they're worth 25 XP each and the bar doesn't move. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I think about my choices that I may have missed some XP here. How could I have done this better? So for me, it's working. I can totally see on a completely fresh new account, never played before, maybe entices people to touch them. They go ding, ding, ding when you grab them. You see numbers. Uh, there might be some sort of feedback there, but perhaps more to come. Honestly, my brain immediately goes to, okay, cool. I see what you've done. You want to use this as a learning tool, but I want to get rid of Trickle XP. Ooh... That's that's a leap. Why? Why? What about getting a a a, a pittance <laughs> of experience for thirty nine seconds uh, makes you make that leap to all right, cool. This is I'm fine with this. Let's do away with trickle XP because I like the danger. What danger to go get the well, little bits? Yeah, yeah. Like you know when you know you're all pushed out top lane. You've got nothing to do because you're losing and you know you should be safe. However, out in the distance, spanning the entire lane, you see these little bits of goodies and you kind of go, oh, I shouldn't, but I could. And I want that to be a right choice in some regards. I want to think to myself, yeah, okay, we got a Zera tool. Like, go out there and get those for us. Don't, don't hide in base here. We got to make a comeback somehow. Let's see if we can collect up the bits and make a comeback. All right. I'm just having this thought right now, but okay. I'm, I'm going to get half in your boat. All right. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm, okay. I've got one foot on the dock still. I got one foot in your boat. I'm not sure which way I'm going, but I'm, I'm oh, coming. I, oh, this is, uh, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not chilling. I'm, you're, you're trepidatious about my boat. Yeah. I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like it could be fun. It could be fun, Kyle. Looks like there's some cold beers in there. I'm in for that, but the, your hooks look rusty. Um, not on stitches, by the way, you, you were very accurate. Um, let's, <laughs> I, I'm, if you're going to get rid of trickle XP, we're, we're now, we're now, uh, bargaining. If I get a fort down, I want my crappy XP orbs to last longer. We start in, with every structure you get down that 39 seconds increases by X amount of seconds. Oh, that's an interesting. So you're, so let me, let me think this. So you get a fort and now you're pushed out and there's no way you're getting the XP that's being made anymore. So you would like to maintain that lead because the orbs will stick around. You could go grab them in front of the enemy base. That, and I was also thinking if you fall back behind, you still have a little bit more of a window to get some experience. That's true. I'm, I guess I'm thinking of like the ketchup mechanic XP, some more of the, uh, the, the blue shell kind of nature of XP in this game where it tries to keep people in it. You're thinking of the passive XP that you gain from getting ahead. That helps you stay ahead. I hadn't worked in, I hadn't worked in your, your, your thought there. That's, I, that's I love, I love problem. chat room or like getting in the weeds. It's like, that's, that's this friggin' show y'all. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 the thought of trickle XP did not even reach my mind, but now that we have full, that we have this delineation between full XP and not full XP, it seems like you could still do something to play with that. And I, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily more convoluted because whether you let, let's say we went with my hypothetical, whether you knew that existed or not, it, it was irrelevant. You would still have more time to go get the XP. Well, and that's kind of my point, too, is that we are now visualizing XP loss. Let's represent visually now what XP even is, because it's coming from other sources. It comes from hero kills. It comes from this trickle system and this passive system. Like, let's let's get it all going. Like, you know, what? There, there's so many interesting ideas that can be done with these orbs now. What if the core pooped out the passive XP? And so when you hearth, you could kind of be like blip, 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 and ride around the corner in a little circle. And yeah, it might take you an extra second. That might kind of suck. So I'm just riding here, you know, go with me for a moment. But there are ways now where we can expand this idea to continue the fun of XP. Mm. I think that's interesting enough. I, I don't think the 25% XP is worth enough for the danger that would come from getting rid of trickle XP and wanting to push out a dangerous amount to go get it. I would like, I would then be very, very mad if anyone went for the turd orbs and died trying. You mean like I, I did? Okay. I, I would be so tilted, like exceptionally tilted. Yeah. It's just me talking, give me my, give me my thoughts. I think it's, an, I think it's interesting. I, I'm not sure I would love that future that we would then live in, but it's an interesting thought. Like there's the, we now as players, not as developers, see a lot see a lot more obvious knobs that can be turned in regards to XP now. Yeah. So that's that's really that's really cool. That's really and cool. I I think that's the big difference and why I like the change is that big XP feels good. Not that little XP feels bad. I feel rewarded when I go to lane and there's still big glowy globs. So big success in my mind. I'm curious to see if we can continue to push this. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But let's talk about the reworks and, and, and how they feel. We'll save Vala for the last, if we have anything else to say on Vala. But um, let's start with Anduin. You, you've been playing quite a bit of him. How's he feeling? He's, he's fun. He feels more active. You've got something to do between your various spells with auto attacks. I think uh, your leap of faith, your grab has always felt great. And now that you're being more aggressive and trying to land maybe an auto attack or a chastise, it just means you're in a rougher position. So you have to choose between that safety and that exchange and that increased healing. The 20s feel good. I think he's just more active than he was. There's that clunk that's so World of Warcraft. He stops moving. You have to complete the channel, the whole spell. I like that. 
and I like that they maintained it, but he's just busier, but not in like a white main Taronda, like busy because he's different kind of way. No. Yeah, I do. I, you know, it's funny you mention it because I, I feel like this is the week I have caught more Anduins out than ever before. Uh, and I wonder it's if it's, I wonder if it's because of, of that extra busyness that they're just having to think a little bit more and they're making little, like just slightly more micro mistakes, especially in regards to positioning that's leaving them open. Um, in reality, it's probably just um, playing Vala and landing stuns <laughs> once I get past them and actually catching, catching these damn Anduins. But, um, I, I will say play uh, other than I feel like I'm catching more of them than usual overall playing against an Anduin feels very similar. It still feels like, Oh, leap of faith. Damn it. Damn it. I, I had that person. And it still feels like light bomb can be an absolute party ruiner. Uh, yeah. The Anduin seems real subtle to me as, as someone who's just playing with and against Anduins and not playing an Anduin myself. I think that's healthy for this stage in the game. And we don't need to limit down our he- you know, our healers in any way. Uh, being able to aggressively light bomb in those situations. They haven't taken away that, you know, it's, there's not any sort of old Rhaegar treatment where that's changed. I'm very happy with him. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Johanna who I was really, really worried about. And I, I have ended, I've ended this week. I ended our little session the other evening with a really, really positive opinion of Johanna post rework. And I, but I, I I can't quite put my finger on why. Well, it's a it's a busyness. Uh, not only her movement speed, but her new falling sword allows you to have a grander eye for the battlefield. Because when it comes to blinds, it's something we've been doing a long time. So of course, it's kind of lost its luster. But my eyeballs are always on the tank and then slightly past them in a very narrow window. Basically, my eyes are the field of view of shield glare. But with Falling Sword, with things like the movement speed abilities, Steed Charge in particular, I really, really like how I can instantly say, I've ended up over here. I'm, I'm managing this backline, but that Stitches is now a problem for my backline. Allow me to instantly adjust my position. Allow me to vacate this current area in an exciting way that involves a, a pony or whatever you're riding or flying through the air. And now I'm over here now. And even things like, you know, Blessed Hammer got a little more cool and that auto attacks have something to do with it. So there's a reason why I'm there. Uh, it's not just a body block because her body is very small when it comes to tanks. It's it's a very busy job and they usually get right on by you. So at least I'm auto attacking for some sort of bonus value. Yeah, I, I just had a, I mean, we had some good experiences with me, me on Johanna. Um, and it seemed to work out. I mean, the one game I can put my finger on it, the opposing team <laughs> overdrafted auto attack. And I just took that new version of, uh, was it? Um, Zealous glare. We're right out the gate. Level one, you get two charges of, of shield glare. Um, which I think we, uh, I know you and I are, are real hot on the, uh, W Vala multi shot. Why can't I just think of the damn word multi shot? Um, but, in my experience, you still need to complete the kill with some auto attacks. And so I, I think stock and blinds in this, this new Vala meta we're going to find ourselves in is going to be way up. Um, and so this, I know this is relatively subtle. It's just, hey, you just get a second charge of the, of, of this thing. It I felt like I was saving asses right and left with two charges of shield glare. Well, you're having a pretty dramatic impact on the battlefield there that's three full seconds of blind if you're staggering correctly and then at 16 you get holy renewal that's giving you five percent total health back that's just really rewarding and busy but in a good way yeah and so you know how i was talking about uh i think this patch is very hit and miss and i think the hits are, are pretty great and i think the misses are missing by quite a bit one of these is is in Johanna, and it's uh, it, eternal retaliation. I think is a major just. I never want to take this talent. This is the new sins exposed. This is your lane clear talent. Yeah, it's the you mark uh, what condemn marks enemies, and then your basic attack removes a mark. 
it re- has a cooldown reduction on condemn when you remove that mark it refunds mana and it like insta kills a minion if it's marked but you, you know you need to go around and bop each minion with your very patient attack speed let's let's point nine it that it's way. not horrible but yes yeah i this talent feels bad which is fine. It, There's bad talents. Yeah. But there was something about this one where I was like, this is so interesting. And it feels like a lot of thought went into it. And I, I, I am just immediate, immediate remorse upon picking this. It's up against Subdue, which is an old, great talent. Hold your ground as well. Your iron skin by 60% and cooldown reduced by five seconds. Like, There's really, really good talents on that tier, which basically make you say, I'm tanking. Somebody else do this job. And I think there's an extra feel bad moment there because Condemn does 200% bonus damage to minions and mercenaries. So when you deal bonus damage and it crits and nobody dies and you've now got this other augment to just go through it slowly, it sucks. It just feels bad in comparison to Sins Exposed, which I really like too because of course, you know, there's that Genji or Zeratul or any hero, you know, an auto attack Rainer next to you. And you're like, somebody do something about this bang and you mark them and you know that somebody else could help out there so when it's only you doing the marks the feel bad is increased in addition to the passive damage you deal anyway yeah yeah that's that, i think that would go a long way if your mark counted for other people that'd be interesting might get busy because you have to i don't know i guess show the mark to your teammates uh, and the chat makes a really good point too. Like compared to subdue and hold your ground, old sins exposed might be something we'd be working away from anyway. Like we might look at that and say, yes, Johanna was our lane clear tank, but now with such important talents on the kit opposed to it, maybe it's something for Storm Lake for us to say, whoa, Johanna, but you, you got to clean this up. We're, we're a messy team. But in any sort of coordinated environment, we would say, no, Johanna is here to do the tank job. And let's make sure she's good at that instead. Yeah. Yep. But let's talk about the hit steed charge, dude. I am in love with this talent. Uh, I've been, I have felt no desire whatsoever to not take it in every game with, of Johanna I played this week. I, I did feel some desire not to take it though into stitches because it does not give unstoppable. Well, you already have a way to give yourself unstoppable. I know. Increase the duration of Iron Skin by one second as a passive on it as well. Like it, my my disappointment merely came from the fact that I mounted, and while I can't be unmounted, you are still subject to slow stuns and any CC that might be under the sun. So my 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 dramatic idea of riding away swiftly was instantly countered by my very vulnerability, and I think that just comes from playing too much URL. Like I I don't mount up because I don't have the dis don't get dismounted part of the text here. So what I do on your is I jump over a wall and then I ride away and I feel awesome. But Johanna doesn't necessarily do that jump over the wall part unless you spent falling sword. And now it kind of feels like you just invested a lot in running away. <laughs> yeah. You have to have a different mindset, right? Like you have to know that it is safe to use the ability or sequ- sequence your, your abilities in such a way that, it's part of your escape, but you need to start your escape with Iron Skin. It's just cool. It's flavorful. It's up against the Nuisance Exposed, which is very different. Punish reduces healing received by 25% for two seconds. Basic attacks extend this duration. And Conviction, which is passive 10% movement speed, increased 20% while condemning. Those are both probably very healthy and decent. Maybe the healing number, I feel... I feel like a healing has to hit 50% before I really care about the reduction. But we also live in a world with Ana, so any heal reduction is just going to be like, and then there's Ana grenade 100%. Why would I bother? Yeah. Well, Ana's not in every game. True. <laughs> also, if you get hooked behind a wall, man, it's with the new just falling sword out of there. What are you doing? Oh, and I, I learned my lesson, of course, because, you know, you, you'd falling sword out or you'd steed and then you just hit your iron skin as that hook flies. Like eventually by the end of the game, I figured this out. There was just that initial disappointment moment where I went, oh, there goes my horse backwards. <laughs> That's the other thing that steed has done is is, is I, I think I'm less inclined to go falling st- sword because of the extra 
control over my own placement on the battleground battlefield that, that, that steed gives me like, uh, it, like I feel more empowered to be where I should be as a tank in a team fight on Johanna now because of steed. So I really don't want to remove myself from the battleground <laughs> with falling sword. Cause I feel like I'm usually where I should be and I'm there for a reason. And if I'm no longer there, bad things happen. I think the unstoppable on falling sword really fixed that issue because you might be scouting, zoning the front line, and then let's say Gravel Bomb Gaslow comes running out of a bush into their back line. You can now adjust to that instantly. You know, not just the stun on the back end, but the unstoppable starts as soon as you start flying. And you can counteract, not the damage, but that moment of reposition and lockdown. Yeah, empower your empower your team to get out of dodge, right? Or just reposition slightly. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. I don't know, this is a weird one. I'm not sure when I should do it outside of Wombo situations like that. I want to do it with like a dive comp and just charge in with this. Sure, sure. It, it has some clunk to it. I think that, you know, learning the hero and practicing is going to mean a lot because I feel like there should be some indicators that a beginner needs. There are so many falling swords where I just don't really end up as far as I thought or exactly where I thought I was going to be. Yeah. Though th- there was a sense our previous PTR, uh, sadly, Heaven's Fury, the level 20 upgrade, only heals allied heroes with those little raining bolts. So you still get the cooldown reduction for hitting enemy heroes for healing allied heroes, but previously hitting enemies with it, lane minions, healing lane minions, meant you could use Falling Sword on infinite cast as long as there was a wave below you. I was unaware of all of this. (laughs) It was a cool feature. It's fine that they cleaned it up. Mm. All right. It's it's time we it's time we have a talk about one of our old favorites. I, I'm not feeling I'm not feeling great about Rainer Kyle. I, I was not stoked on paper last week. Uh, I think I am unchanged. I don't think I'm more disappointed. I'm definitely not less disappointed. <laughs> I think I uh, Rainer has met with my concerned expectations. The feels bad of, and I'm using that that phrase a lot, so maybe I should come up with something else just to just to vary my speech. The the bummerness of Ace in the Hole changing is dramatic for me. Yeah, that's a, it's a big one. It's a big one for me too. Um, I when when Rainer first came out, he was he was wielding a sniper rifle because that's what he had in his Wings of Liberty uh, model. And then they changed it over to the gauze rifle. So he was more Marini. I, I feel like taking Ace in the Hole down this road of a penetrating round build is just kind of, it, 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 it's clashing with how I want to play Rainer, which was penetrating round was like this kind of Zuljin revolving axes made up kit thing to just fill out all the buttons. I really don't want aiming Rainer and that's funny because he's shooting a gun, but you know, you right click and he shoots the thing you want. Having to shoot a frost bolt with a long cooldown out of my Rainer isn't my fantasy. So the fact that they took Ace in the hole from this target the CC guys with your auto attack to enemy heroes hit by give them some pepper are slowed by 10%. 10%. Like, oh, <laughs> disappointment incarnate. Penetrating rounds deals 25% more damage to stunned or slowed heroes. I'm just. No, I don't want to. And I saw it work great this week. I played against Hosty. He did amazing. Destroyed with the penetrating round build. That's great. He could aim. I can't. (laughs) This goes back to multi-shot Vala. Like, yes, sign me up for months of work or I can do a cone effect. And Rainer is, for me, officially an exterminator hero. Uh, Now, I, I do think like veteran marksman is really, really good. And if you have a pocket healer so you can avoid the pitfalls of the loan, you're going to be able to do a lot out there. But that's a lot of what Vala's doing great right now anyway. So he's being overrun. He's being outclassed in something he might actually be good at in the future. Yeah. I've heard from a remarkable uh, number of unrelated individuals that their Rainer is camping and getting ganked in quick match. 
that oh, yeah, yeah sure that that the enemy Vala or Nova like it, who, I mean who knows because they're on the enemy team and then not like I don't know but it, I think in these in these people's minds the the story is Vala or or uh, not Vala Valera or Nova look at talents and go oh oh uh, Rainer picked up that new exterminator talent he's gonna be camping I'm gonna go kill him. And like I, I, I'm just, I can't believe how many messages I got this week about that. Going, oh my god, I just can't, I can't. I'm having no fun on Rainer because the Celties are just coming, coming for me when I'm camping. And I'm like, I, I've never seen, I've never heard this story before. Like when anyone else like suddenly became a camp worthy hero, this is the first time ever. Like what is this? I don't know. I've just heard from enough people that it is in my mind. And I'm like, is this really happening? If we all just got, Oh, Oh, Rainer's camping. I know I can kill him. We also don't have super creeps in this game. We have a catapult system. And so the inspiring minions and mercenaries payoff for me is a little bit different than it would be in something like Dota. Like in Dota, you destroy what is essentially our keeps. And all the minions upgrade and become better based on what type of keep you even killed. But that's a whole Dota system. If the minions became better over the course of the game than they currently are, which is kind of the trash that you kill for fun on XP, maybe this Inspire thing would feel cooler to me. But it, I like that possession on Sylvanas gives lane clear. I don't really ever want to invest more in a lane than that. Because I always feel disappointed when it goes and dies. These are a lot of feelings, of course. These are all feelings. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will. I do want to give it up to you though, because you were really pushing for specialist Rainer, or just like Laner Rainer, as I, I would like to start calling him. Can we call him Laner Rainer? Yeah, absolutely. G- Jim Laner. Let's call him Jim Laner. And uh, I think you're right. I think it is the way to go. I'm also with you with current present Kyle that it's weird and awkward and more work than I think it's necessarily worth doing. But I think there is something here. I think, I think we can work with this. Um, I'm just not think, sure, sure if that's the way we want to go. I think the pat with a balanced Vala, the power of Rainer will really shine in that he has his own self healing and his own armor at four with fight or flight. And that means he can basically exist as a, Veteran marksman, lone talent. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, 60% bonus give him some pepper damage. That's amazing. And you're stacking a quest. You have armor and healing for yourself. That means one healer can take really good care of you. And that Anduit is looking really good alongside Rainer. Like, when we factor out double support Vala, as we might know it, and Rainer takes over that role, I think there is a world where he isn't specialist Rainer. He isn't Laner Rainer. But right now... It just, it just just doesn't line up. And I'm having a hard time about the ace and the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, I am too. I, am, I, I was last week. I mean, last week, my, my whole Rainer take was, I don't want to queue. I don't play this hero for the queue. But... That's the talents are decent. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. When I, I, I don't know. I'm like, if I'm going to go veteran's marksman, like that like, makes me just want to take all the rest of the self healing talents. So like, I just never die and hopefully hold on to that lone talent for the whole game. <laughs> but it's, I don't know. My, I was really unimpressed with the damage I was doing. I was doing a good job on the lanes, but my damage was just sad. I think I, I don't, I, I need to, I almost want to like do a proper side by side. Like, can I can I manage more damage on like even like nerf to Sonya than I can on New Rainer? Because New Rainer's damage numbers while going a Merc build was really unimpressive to me. Let let's you and I before next week we will play a Rainer Anduin game, and I want you to just let it ride. Like take veteran marksman at one with the lone talent, right click one enemy and just let go of the keyboard. And- <laughs> And that really is a way to play this guy. When someone else has your back in that strong of a way, he can get really good, even Zul'jin levels of damage. This isn't an awful rework. We just have to overcome all of our previous notions of how Rainer worked and who you were targeting, which also meant you were often changing targets because I was pinging the back line and then Stitches 
he's always on my mind right now, but you know, stitches got rooted and I go, Ooh, switch to that. And that felt more active. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you say, by the way, when Anduin, uh, uh, leap of faiths you when you take your, your hand off the keyboard, right? Not today. You say boy King, take the wheel. Oh, okay. Okay. That was my other option. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I got That's what you say. Little lion, take the wheel. Something like that. Stitches. Hey, speaking of stitches, yeah. Let's. Uh, how how are you feeling about stitches? Because uh, I played one game with stitches and felt so utterly unimpactful. I have not been able to muster up the desire to try again. <laughs> Rework stitches to me is a lot like when you play through a bunch of quests in World of Warcraft and you don't understand the story. And so someone's like, you got to read the short story of this book. So you go read the whole thing and nothing's changed. <laughs> there is so much text the paragraphs are massive i look at this trait and i go wow this must be great when in all honesty it's it's the same hero it's all the same stuff there's this vile gas business which is so complicated on paper but really land your hooks devour meat play stitches yeah Vile gas is so much subtler than I w- ever thought it would be. Right. Well, you're talking about the, the trait pop. Like it is it's shambling horror. It has an activatable 60 second cooldown activate to spread vile gas in a large area. We're talking like the size of a blizzard. Like this area is not large. Eat every yeah, second re- regular blizzard, not talented eat. blizzard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, prevent your movement speed from being reduced below 110%. Like, there are some great tips there. There are very cool builds, such as uh, patchwork creation, which could get us into a world where getting that vile gas out is managed for that much armor. And that's a really, really cool idea. But And I'm playing quick match stitches with savor the flavor, with second helping. I love second helping. I mean, I, I threw some shade here, but there are some really cool ideas. Second helping at level seven is a lone talent, but it's got a great design to it. Devour gains one additional charge passively. Awesome. I love that talent. Lone, if Stitches is at max health after using Devour, he gains a shield equal to 15% of his max health for 10 seconds. Every death reduces the shield. That's a lone talent. That, that's cool design because... The chances I'm making use of this while ahead are decently high, and I'm probably just stacking things for fun. And if I lost it, yeah, I'd be affected. But in a losing environment, I'm probably not getting that shield anyway. And it gives you a chance, right? It gives you a little extra something to work with in a losing scenario. Yeah. uh, There are some really cool talent designs here. Then there's 13 with like chop, chop under pressure, and my brain kind of goes... What if, oh, I'm slamming? Do I change my play style? And maybe that's where I'm really kind of harping on stitches a bit. Is that I don't feel like outside of my enjoyment of second helping and digestive juices, I'm really making a choice about how I play based on my talents. But I really like the build that I have with the digestive juices. Reduce hero damage by 50%. Sonya's spinning on my back line. Yeah, I don't need help, but I can reduce her damage, meaning I reduce her healing. That feels great. It is augmented stitches to be the exact same person he is with, well, more text. Yeah. Still feels like stitches to me, which, which is someone who hasn't traditionally been a fan. Doesn't make me all all that excited. Um, I don't know. I don't know where he, I still don't really know where he fits as like a, I don't know, a, a strategic composition. Yeah, I I play him best as a re-engager. And I, there are some really cool talents and ideas here. Like, here's something that was presented for the very first time in our game. Gift from the Embalmer, level 20 talent. Putrid Bile deals 100% more damage to heroes. Each time Putrid Bile damages an enemy hero, the duration of Stitch's next death timer is reduced by 2% to a maximum of 80%. All stacks are lost on death. That that's cool. That that's a neat augment. And how cool would it be to see somebody like Malfiel get something active like that to do? 
Yeah, and we got Rainer getting with a 30-second death timer at 20, plus the, the death Hyperion in that same talent. They're, I mean, there's a little sub theme here. They're, they're starting to mess with, with res timers again. I don't think we're ever going to get resurgence of the storm back. No, no. And, and, and things like no one can stop death on Malthiel have a three minute cooldown on them. Like, it's a, it's a draw. Well, not necessarily a drawback, but yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I don't think Malthiel should come screaming out of the base with like now a quest to mark multiple people and he gets crazy and he can res again. Like, yeah, I like the control here, but it's cool to see some augments to talents we haven't seen before in this way. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, anything, anything about Vala we didn't already cover? No, no, I think, I think we said, it. I think I've, I think, I think I've said, said my piece. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, every game I've Banner. played to Vala, I've won. It's Banner or picker. Yeah, yeah, we'll be ready for a picker, certainly. Yeah, ban, ban her or hope your okay. enemy banner makes a mistake. One, I do think she has a really two. cool augment in that she feels short range. I don't, it, it, it's just a feeling I'm getting, maybe because I was playing so much Rainer before heading back to Vala here, but anything that augments her range, like Far Flight Quiver, or particularly that Arsenal 20% uh, increase on multi shot, just is amazing. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, let's take a look at the rest of the changes and kind of talk about some of the numbers, especially to base kits, base numbers. Oh, uh, I, 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 I want to pause this real quick. And yes, I, I do believe if you're going around to top end streams, they have every right to diss on follow because their tool is just going to eat her lunch. Like, Yes, we are going to have two different worlds, and one is called Pro Play, probably Dead Vala, and then there's at home where we got to control that. There's the game we play. Yes. <laughs> are you in a pro league? Then that doesn't matter. It, it's the statements for fun we make, and I understand why people will take to red and be like, those guys, those guys don't know how this game is working. Every opinion they have is awful. It's like, well maybe think about the context and that we are communicating in, but yes, it, it's a really important distinction to make. So let's, let's say here today. Yeah. In, in the game at home, I think you should absolutely be controlling the ball. 100%. If you're playing the CCL, cool. This entire conversation so far hasn't been about that. Um, so getting back into other changes that went down, you know, we, we talked about, we talked about the broad strokes last week, but we didn't really talk about what some of these number changes absolutely look like. Um, so starting with may who saw a nerf to her base health. Um, it's less than a 2% reduction to, to frame this, uh, in a, in a, in a slightly more helpful way, I think than, than saying it went from two or 2675 to 2625. That is less than 2%. And like a new Barak before her, she fell about 4%. A lot of what May did was very tactical diving and running away right after. We have an icing build, which is the primary way to play May, where you put down a blizzard and then you ride through it trying to get someone knocked back into it, and then you run away. So any effect to her health is going to mean losses. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... Fine. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still quite down on May. <laughs> it seems like where we are uh, when we play together in, 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 in high plat land, May is just, everyone's real stoked on May, but it doesn't work out a lot of oh, the times. Yeah, you've got one job and it's that icing job and it's not easy to do. Like I do not expect plats to be executing on that, but it's so important to the character that to see her picked out without those skills, it's disappointing. Plat's a rough place. It's 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 a bummer town. Is that what you said earlier? Yeah, bummer town. Bummerific. Granted, I, well, we were trying to come up with other ones, and now we said that twice, so I got to come up with something else. But <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, it, overall, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too concerned about this one. I think if you were a good May before, I think you'll still be a good May now. Yeah, and Mays and Mid Diamond, where I've been playing this week after placements, they're fine. Yeah, uh, Diva also. Also received a nerf. Uh, base health on her mech was reduced by just over 2%. And then the bonus damage to close enemies on fusion cannons 
was also reduced. It went from 50 to 40%, and that's actually a 20% reduction in that bonus damage, which is noteworthy. Um, that said, I have still seen what I can only imagine are, are seasoned Diva players doing really good damage numbers, which is all relative compared to what I've been seeing out of all the players this past week, but <laughs> removing Vala from my mind, I'm, I've still ended up in games this week where I've been really impressed with the damage output of a Diva. She's going to be okay. Uh, the hit is very strong, and it's it's really sad for me. The combo hit of fusion cannons plus the level one full metal getting reduced from 20% to 16% healing is a blow. And with our current meta as it currently sits with Vala and sort of the pressure that Diva is receiving, it doesn't feel like you can really absorb any attacks. It's such a tiny amount of health, but it adds up when you're having to defense matrix and receive that damage, even though it's reduced. And so you got Zul'jins who are just going to farm on you anyway. There's a lot of repositioning going on. Johanna's now teleporting away or moving at higher movement speed. So I don't feel like my bombs are hitting as much. Take Rush down now at level four, which has its damage reduced against non-heroic enemies from 70% to 50%. That's your lane clear. That's how you double soaked. All of this is adding together to be a pretty huge hit into D.Va. And micro missiles, absolutely. 35% slow to 30% slow. Go to 25%. Like, that, that's fine. Those missiles are fine. They're damaged. You, you can kick it down to 10% if you really want to. You probably don't. But uh, fine. That's a fine place to target. I, I think I like that we're more defining D.Va's strength being a slightly higher damage dealing tank quote unquote tank. But at the same time, like I understand your, your concerns, but I think I like the focus that's being like, I don't know what's the word. I'm absolutely blanking on how I wanted to finish that sentence, Kyle. No, I, I, I see what you mean. Uh, I, I feel like this is adding to, with Sonya and with Hogger, kind of this like Merkocalypse we're having at the moment. Where that's interesting. Where we're dr dramatically slowing down who's doing camps at what speed or with how much safety. And that could mean things like Merc Rainer are perfectly viable because they have to pre tap in order to get through a whole night's camp and stuff like that. That but there were heroes that didn't have to use a well to do that sort of thing. That's why we left Greymane in the dust and went with Hoggers and Divas and Sonyas. And even Sonya loses a pretty substantial amount of health getting through Hellbats and Knoll camps. Yeah, yeah. I think Sonya still a, would be one of my preferred murking heroes at the moment, um, especially post the, the, the Hogger nerf, which we're going to talk about next. But um, I don't... I need. More, I think I need a little more time with it because Rainer still feels just feels just so damn busy, and he doesn't bring enough of a of a da he doesn't bring the damage padding that a lot of our other Merc heroes bring, even if they're maybe slightly less efficient at taking camps than Rainer. But maybe that's okay. Like maybe we just start building different comps and we get like, you know, maybe that does shake the meta up a little bit. And Diva is going to be fine. There's just a big adjustment I personally have to do to get get past all these little tiny hits that have added up to basically what was my whole kit getting nerfed. They, they didn't mess with self-destruct. That is true. And I that's a really pretty do... big portion of your kit. Definitely. And I do think things like nuclear option are really, really cool. It's just not as valuable as rushdown and all these other options that have made up the kit. I would love this is very this is very personal for divas and probably not enough people care about this, but they went on and looked at target lock. This is a talent where defense matrix after 1.25 seconds, people inside of it have their armor reduced by 15 and their movement speed reduced by 25%. They took that down from 1.25 seconds to one second, but still like when I put out a defense matrix, I want stuff now <laughs> and do whatever you can. It's up against good to go, which is your pilot abilities and pew, pew, pew. Like, I need that reward right now. You need 0.25 seconds at the most for me to want to take this thing. 
All right. Yeah. That, that's that's my soapbox. It's not for the audience. That's for that's for anybody listening who has the power to change it. <laughs> that's you bargaining, is what that sounds yes. like. Like, hey, could you I'd like to bring some attention to this, please? And thank you. Um, all right, Hogger. I, you know, I, I looked at these numbers last week, Kyle. I looked at Hogwild. I looked at the radius going down. I looked at the damage being increased. I looked at the damage bonus uh, per point of rage reduction. Uh, and also that the fact that the damage bonus from rage only applies to heroic targets now. And I thought to myself, surely it can't be that bad. I can't believe how slowly Hogger takes camps now but I'm also totally okay with it. There must be so many examples of this in history. You know, I'm, I'm a Fletcher. I make arrows for bows and here comes guns. You know, it, <laughs> I, I, I collect kindling and sell it on the street and here comes electricity. I, I, this is so personal to me and my NGS experience playing with Cavalier Guest being the drafter, but I've played so much Hogger last season. So much. Not because I love being a goofy knoll who giggles and howls. That's n- not a fantasy I want. But because it could do camps, nine seconds flat, 12 seconds on hard camps, and I was faster and better than anyone else could do it, and I could leave with full health. It's not even about the speed for me. It's the fact that it takes me so much longer to do it. I take way more damage than I can recover from my loot hoard. So I walk <laughs> away like Sonya, missing a half, even three-fourths of my health. And then the real kicker, and I, I the the real tough part, it wasn't it's not even the angles that I, I memorized for every camp or figured out how to use my loot hoard to bounce off faster so I could get through this camp two seconds faster. It's the fact that rage management has no place in camps anymore. That so much practice. And as in the words of Buzz Lightyear, years of academy training wasted. (laughs) When I would go into lane, use my loot hoard behind the minion wave, swing my big old mace, knock him into it so I could have this huge jump in rage. And I go, okay, I'm at full rage. (gasps) And run down to the camp on bottom lane, Tomb of the Spider Queen, and start going through it as fast as I could to make sure my rage didn't decay. And now the rage doesn't work on non-heroic targets. So what what they did was they made this this, this heavy management mini game that was really rewarding to figure out. And they made him a, a, a bruiser, a team fighter. And... I'm not sure I'm interested anymore. And for many pro players and tournament players looking at this, he's a pummel bot, which if you're not familiar with that is pummels a level 13 talent that reduces spell power by 50%. Now they nerfed it. They took it from, you know, three second duration to two second duration. But the weird thing about this, it also slows up to 50%. So it's it's an amazing talent, amazing talent. Uh, However, when you were managing your rage correctly, you had more and more heroic damage, which was nerfed as well because you got this flat damage increase. So instead of getting into a team fight, using my staggering blow to knock people away, then doing some auto attacks to try to work myself up to full rage and then hog wilding for maximum damage, hogger's now looking like I will hog wild for absolute less damage through an enemy team to lower their spell armor and then on the other side, who, who knows? Maybe my team did the rest. I'm, while you, uh, so I, I I get it. There's a, and I, I don't mean this is like in a chiding way, but like there has to be a part of you in the back of your mind that knew this was coming when you were oh, putting all absolutely. that work into Hogger. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, okay. this is. This is the scene in the in the heist movie where you look at your account and all your money's gone. Like, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, the, the sleepy I, guy in Ocean's Eleven is riding the elevator with his greased hair, and he realizes his vault is empty, and he's been had. Like, can, that, that's what. I, I also want to. I'm bringing back in your anecdote. You're, would you say it was like ah, I, I sell I sell kindling, and here comes electricity? I needed to think of something that had been replaced more than twice. So I'm going to go with movies, Kyle, because before Hogger came, 
<laughs> I, I was around on normal solo laners that could take Merc camps at a reasonable amount of time. And then here came, here came Hogger. It was like, it was like, uh, you know, if you were, I guess it didn't need to be replaced two, three times, but I was thinking I, I was movie theaters and here came Blockbuster. And, and so yeah, like I felt replaced when Hogger came because if there's a Hogger on the opposing team, there was, we talked about this, I think last week, there wasn't really an equal that you could, that you could pick. No, there wasn't. You were not going to be able to keep up with the rate that Hogger could take camps. Um, so and, to a certain degree, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, oh, I, absolutely. And, and if you really want to like, if you really want to like wound me, what you can really say is Kyle, you suck at team fights. I've seen you loot horde and you don't land perfectly with yourself positioned on the other side to slam them into the thing. And then your hog wild angles in a team fight in this new improvised situation aren't that great. It's so true. It, it, it's so true. It hurts. I am not so good at hogger in those improvised situations that I will continue to play him now because my augment and impact on the team was the fact that I took a camp stupid fast and still double soaked on the other side of it. That's what Twitch chat is for Kyle. I'm not going to say that to you. I'll let, I'll let chat say that to you. And, and his team fight is fine. Like it, it really is like the damage increase that he got while the point per point of damage rage was reduced. This means that going into a team fight with no rage isn't as big of a gamble. You are going to get up to that rage at the same rate you previously did. Your initial hog wild that you engage with, with something like aggro range is still going to kick quite a bit of butt. And then you'll be at full rage on the other side. Cause you did aggro range and you can no control. Like, I was about to say, I know no, I know no control got nerfed essentially, right? Because it decays faster. Decay rate increased by fifty percent. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Like I know, I know no control technically got nerfed, but also like it kind, it got a, a side buff through the through hog wild doing more damage. By the way, it, it got a lot more damage. I know the radius was reduced, but the radius was reduced by like less than five percent. The damage was increased by thirty seven percent. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a big well, damage increase. And it's which, yeah, again, it's like, to me, it's a focus thing. I know and, but there were a lot of nerfs. Like th- th- we have a lot of nerfs we have to talk through. And, and this is, to me, it's very similar to diva. It's like, I don't begrudge anyone who played these heroes and are, 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 are sad that, that power is getting stripped out. But at the same time, when I, I think what I'm seeing is like, it's a, it's a focus. That's the theme. That's what the, I think the team's trying to do here with this balance is they're trying to focus these heroes. Hogger was a little bit too much of a Swiss army knife. Diva was a little too much of a Swiss army knife. And now Diva's being more focused on team fight ability and damage. And we're seeing the exact same thing here with Hogger and, uh, you know, I'm biased, didn't play these heroes, but also my hero got nerfed. So I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I think this makes sense. And I think it was warranted. Totally. Totally. I mean, for me, it was, it's that, it's that meme with the guy with the dust devil behind him. Here it comes. Like that was the fun. The, 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 the gamble of Hogger was getting into a team fight slowly or managing your rage the way there. And now the new Hogger is just easier to play, frankly. Like you're going to get in a team fight and just activate Hog Wild. Why not? Just learn, go for it. And if the team fight lasts a long time, particularly if you do some talents like uh, level seven seeing red that reduces your cooldown based on your rage, you'll have another hog wild that's now at full rage later, which isn't as important as it once was. So it, it, to me, it, 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 it's a lot like the complaints I hear about a World of Warcraft update. I really like the previous mini, mini game they set up for my class mm. and this new design isn't as interesting. Well, just think about a year from now when you get to tell your back in my day hogger stories. Like you got to live hogger at the peak. They're already happening. (laughs) Um, Where everyone's on the electric horse. Back in back in last week, I took a Merc camp so fast you wouldn't believe it. Let's move on because I'm not trying to complain. No, no, no. I I got you. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I don't think I don't think you're complaining. I don't think you're complaining. Uh, I'm complaining. Let's take a look at Sonia, <laughs> but not in the way you might think. You might not in the way you might think. We pretty much covered this in full last week. Cause it's a very, this is a mercifully brief 
set of nerfs here to Furious Blow, Shattered Ground, and Giant Slammer. But last week, we so I'm going to focus on the one thing that I think we left on a bit of a cliffhanger last week, which was Shattered Ground, the way they changed it, because they really, really changed Shattered Ground. It now works two different ways depending on what you're targeting. It, uh, base, you know, base level, it increases the splash damage on Slam by 250%. But now, if you target a hero with Slam, it further increases its splash damage by 250%. If you're targeting other enemies, anything that's not a hero, it instead increases the length of slam splash by 66%. So last week we were talking about how, oh, that's interesting. You know, in a, in a world where you have an option of what you're, sla- you're slamming on, like you have an option. You can make uh, a decision. Do I want 66% more damage? On my, or no, sorry, 66% more length. Cool. I'm going to slam on anything other than a hero. If I'd rather have the, the, the splash damage, uh, increased, I'm going to slam on a hero. I don't think this is all that interesting in, in practice now out, out in the real world, in the ladder, in the quick match. Um, most team fights, there's, it's not when when have we ever had lanes hang around for extended periods of time in a real five v five? It's interesting on paper, yes. So yeah. Asmodee and demons, the Nubarak beetles, this idea that you might be battling heroes and you go, oh, "I'm gonna slam that beetle," so it hits the backline Vala. Let's do that instead of hitting a Nubarak and maybe Hogger standing next to him, so they're gonna receive the damage instead. Uh, there, there is a big switcheroo in the language here. So uh, the previous version was 125% bonus of its base damage went to the splash, meaning that level four, a 51 point splash went to 257. That was a lot. And you weren't making any choices like this. Now it's 250% damage increase, but that's of the splash damage. So compared to that previous 257, it's now 180. So this is a pretty big nerf unless you're hitting frontline targets for 309. And when I played this this week, I had an Arthas and a Thrall hanging out next to him. And man, they felt the ire, particularly that Thrall. Now I died, of course, because I was stuck in the Arthas business, you know, and I (laughs) ran out out of fury and whatnot eventually. But it was still pretty neat. I think combining this with the lack of always range with the heal even, which, you know, you are giving up some other 16 talents to get. Um, Let let me, let me take a look at those real quick. Cause that's a, that's giant slammer with that healing down. It's up against nerves of steel. So it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird place for her to be. And I don't think she's disappeared from the game. It's just the, the choice is not as rewarding as big money damage slams were. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. It was just really fun to just hit really big, long slams, no matter what the target was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, I don't know. I, the, the choice is still there which, with the new shadow ground in, as far as, you know, one V one in the solo lane is concerned. But uh, in terms of, of this being interesting for team fights, I, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it in, in, in application. And I think that you know, the, the joy that we felt as Sonya's slamming a wall and seeing Hanzo die behind it, those days are gone because the damage throughput just isn't going to be that high when you are going for that extended slam. Yeah, it is worth noting that like you are getting the length increase because you're slamming a wall, which is not a hero, so it's not upping the damage. You are getting the length, so you are probably hitting them, but it's like it's tickling. Right. It's not, yeah, it's not noteworthy damage. Um, which, again, though, like, if I'm going to be sitting here going, yeah, there was no counter. Like, there's no counter to the hogger merkability. The, there's nothing else you can draft that's on that level. Listen, the same was true for Sonya and the backline damage that Sonya could, could achieve. There was just no equal. What the hell were you going to do? Oh, they got it. They're going to front to back us. We'll front to back them. Well, with with what? With what? Unless you're an absolute god tier Tychus, I don't see it. Well, and the front to back was you were killing the front while 
killing the back. It was yeah, yeah, it was, it was very unique. Like the back would die as you kill the front. <laughs> it's um, yeah, it was it was too much. Um, the closest thing I have to a bummer feeling is a uh, Sonya's counters, which already worked. They really work now. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, yeah. Thrall, Thrall's really good into her. Jeez. Yeah, Which was, I'm, uh, I I I want to play some thrall again. I'm looking forward to that possibility. Yeah, I, yeah. The thing is, uh, like overall, I think Sonya's fine. Um, I'm I I wouldn't be surprised if we see her pick start trending upwards again in picks, and then I think you're gonna get on thrall. I think if you're trying to play thrall like in the next like three weeks, I don't think you're gonna find enough Sonyas to make it worth your time. Well, and I think that Sonya, so whirlwind Sonya. If you weren't just a Sonya main slamming games because you love her. There was a, ooh, look at that, ooh, g- g- double frontline Gul'dan and Morales. Like, they're all going to be in one big pile. I'm going to spin all over that. And I think we need to think about Sonya again in this draft ability. Oh, yes, the Arthas and the Thrall will be standing next to each other. Therefore, I'm going to pick Sonya. Previously, it was like Johanna, four-person backline, and you're like, yep, Sonya. Sonya's <laughs> got the, the, the job for that. I can leap back there. I can kill them all via Johanna's face. It's going to be great. <laughs> I I hope we get back to a like a leap backline Sonya. I really liked that. I didn't like backline Sonya not being in the backline. That that just seemed it was too good. It was too good. I like that she can access the backline. I want her to be back there. I really find that fun. I do not find whirlwind builds all that appealing. So I I, I hope we I hope that we figure this out and that can still be a thing. Um, but but for right now, <laughs> so, so News Rain was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Abused the hell out of it. Uh, I'm going to miss it. She's down 5% basically as well. So uh, it's going to be a, a ride for her. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know who got nerfed across the board and is up in win rate? Lost Vikings. Okay. <laughs> health and basic attack damage down across all three of the vikings i mean this is just it's like somebody who owns a monkey like congrats on your bizarre pet that occupies your whole life <laughs> wait wait are you saying <laughs> this is one of those things where uh like, yeah, my friend plays Vikings, and that's basically their entire personality. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> a little bit. You know, like the 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 parrot owner. Like, your house is going to be covered in poop, and like, yeah, but they can whistle Final Fantasy. Like, that <laughs> does it for you, huh? <laughs> I'm imagining a parrot singing uh, the Sephiroth music, and it's, yeah. it's really annoying because parrots are kind of shrill. I mean, I I think from the outside, uh, Viking health down is solid. There are augments here, like his Norse force, to try to bring some of that up because it's up against just amazing talents. Uh, Let's see here. They they went and augmented level 16s. Is that the level where Olaf gets stunned? No, no, that's a... Wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Yeah, yeah, so large and in charge. So I don't want to live in a world where all the talents are good enough that they compete with the things that Viking has. That is good. And I understand you can't take away those things because what's good. So I'm just happy they die a little faster. Same, same. We, we murdered the hell out of some lost Vikings in a towers of doom the other night. That was fun. Yeah. That was a good time. That was a good time. But yeah, Vikings are Vikings have always been in, in again, in, in public statistics on sites like hot logs, always had a very, very high win rate. Always had an exceptionally low popularity. One of the lowest played heroes, one of the highest win rates. You know, Probius was one of those for a very, very long time as well. Um, still is actually damn, I just went over there. Never mind. Still there. I don't know what I was talking past tense. But it's uh, not for me, don't understand it. I definitely understand why it works when it works though. Oh, and, and for me, it like I I had my heyday on Lost Vikings, and it was called Ranked Blackheart's Bay. Like I I played a lot of Lost Vikings when they first came out and were very powerful. It's a lot like the Raider situation for me. It's a lot of micromanagement that feels amazing in the early game, and as those advantages slip away via the four man's activities or just 
scaling. I'm not much for it. Yeah. Well, and now we're we're basically out of heroes that got kind of base level nerfs. We're kind of just into the underpick talent changes uh, and or nerfs to certain talents um, like high five on Lucio, for example. Right. But then you've got that bug going on with the cooldown reduction. So don't expect to see Lucio in CCL this weekend. You know, they haven't announced yet what that hero pool is going to be, but a lot of tournaments are going to be avoiding Lucio for that time. Or maybe you just can't pick the augment either way. He's fine and very powerful and, and good for him. Uh, Uther, it's all about that devotion trait. His armor that he gets for himself is down to 15 from 25. There's a decent little augment to his level 16 talents, but of course, we're talking level 16 Uther here. You know, you're competing with the power of Benediction. And so a lot like our Olaf stun, that's going to be a long road if you want to make those viable. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a little bummed about them coming for Tank Uther. Uh, one of my favorite weird things to do in this game, but I I kind of get it. I, I almost want them to go the other direction, though, and just, like, double down on it and be like, Uther is a tank now that heals. Enjoy. I think it gets... it. It's fine when that's the plan, and us at home with our, with our you know, our little spaghetti meals are going, oh, let, let's add the toppings later. Uther, you're the last bit. Here's a meatball. And we go, oh, oh meat, spaghetti meatballs. They're making lasagna. Like, they, they start with the meatballs. The drafts that have Uther are first pick Uthers. And then, and then the enemy team goes, oh, jeez, like, what? what? What is that? What's it going to be? Is it main tank? Is it triple? Is it tank with two supply? The question is so large that I feel like that's where they're targeting the issue. And if you can get Uther to a point where he's either tank or support, that's fine. But him covering all those bases in a draft is just unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, as for Asmodan, the PVE Asmodan taking a hit. Uh, kind of a, across the board talent-wise here. And then they're giving the level scaling of Global Annihilation uh, quite a bit of love because as the devs point out in the dev comments, uh, his Q builds are underperforming at most levels of play. The big one for me is the Demonic Invasion range decrease, which goes from 20 to 13.5. Yeah, major so decrease there. You might actually see Asmodan. I mean, granted, the spell will reveal him, but you might actually see Asmodan as he approaches your keep and you might have an extra two seconds to react. Well, there. and the grunts are doing less less damage. Yeah, not a ton, three off, but that still adds up, of course, because there's many grunts doing the attack. Right, right. That's three taken off of every single grunt doing every single damn attack. You might act, you're like, you're really having to commit. You're having to get closer, and you probably also have to contribute some damage beyond your your grunts. We caught out an Asmodan a lot this week, I feel like, for this reason. He just had to go a little deeper, and it just wasn't as fast. Yeah, to me, it's 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 pretty obvious what they were trying to do here. And and in my anecdotal experience, it was uh, <laughs> it was successful in that it's uh, making Asmodan a little less successful at uh, sniping your buildings. Falstad, Falstad uh, yeah. It, the big thing is the bug fix, right? Like, well, the big thing too is that they nerfed him at the same time they bug fixed him. Mm, that's true. So dishonorable discharge, cooldown reduction reduced, decent nerf there, but you don't get the takedown reset until the quest is complete, which is a huge blow. This guy is now sixth from the bottom in win rates. We dropped down almost nine full percent on a false dad that. May have just needed a little cleaning up if we wanted to continue a false dad dominated meta. That is, this is the one that seemed like an overreach, <laughs> like they went a little too far. Um, because to us, we, we were really, really focused on that bug. Like to you and I, it seemed like that's where the power lied or laid, laid where the power was, Blue? where the power flew. <laughs> And, and the um, other weird, but to yeah, to to combine both fixing a bug that was a major crux of power for the hero, combine that with with a nerf, a major nerf, to an overpick talent, it it really seems to have uh, laid poor false dead low. Well, and in my CCL interviews I got to do this week, I 
I talked to Falstad players and they're like, who cares? I wasn't taking those bug talents anyway because I couldn't. And I've become really, really good at full auto attack builds with secret weapon. So we're basically all seduced by, oh, it's finally free. I can finally, you know, it's no longer bug. I, I can be a gentleman. I'm, I'm a respectful Falstad player and I'm going to be just as powerful. No, in the background of all this buggage came a build that was extremely good, had extremely good throughput with secret weapon and auto attacks and didn't give away where you were going to position during it. You know, flying around with a lightning rod attached and using your barrel roll to keep it attached. That's just too dangerous for high end play. You want my like my personal story from the Nexus this week? I got like a little I got a little, a little observation for you. Sure. You know how I said uh, I've had a really really overall positive experience. Most of the players in my games have just been really awesome folks to hang out with and play a game. Okay. I think I learned this week that Falstad players don't read. <laughs> yeah. The amount of cuss laden chat by Falstads in. Almost every game I've had with the Falstead this week. Some just like cussing the paint off the walls like, oh, it's bugged. My the takedowns aren't resetting my lightning rod. And game after game. And it's not the same Falstad. And I'm just like, d d d right there on the launch is patch note. You can click it. You can go to the thing. I'm looking at your history. It's the only hero you're playing. It takes you five seconds. Click on the thing. Scroll down to the Falstad. What are you doing? You know, I, that's, I feel like some, um, that, that makes sense. I, <laughs> and it only stuck out by virtue of almost every, like every lobby we got into when we were drafting, like people are talking about the changes. Everyone's like, Oh, Hey, yeah. how, how you feel? How's that Vala looking? How you, how you feeling about the Vala? Oh, Sonia. Oh, that nerf hit hard. Are you sure we want to be taking them? Like it seemed like everyone across the board was read up, ready to go. But every time I got a false that they were just, Pissed as hell and thought the game was bugged. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I, I can see how we get into that because of just the longevity of that bug and the wide but the, advertisement. But the, but, but the, the, the takedowns wasn't the bug. No, no, no. But I, I see how they went from this hero. It was so bugged. Oh my god! And now there's something that's changed. It must be a bug. There's no other. There's no other answer. This must be a bug. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. I'm, I'm just wanted to just want to throw a little little shade in some strangers' directions. I agree with you. That's all I, I agree with you. Just wanted, this is like I noticed the trend, and the only people that didn't know what the hell was going on this week were Falstad players. So it's just like so you're in the know enough to know that this is the the hero that's busted, and you should just be slamming games with, but you're not in the know enough to pay attention when the patch hits. I think we got a. I think I think I think we were in in games with a bunch of, of uh, fan viewers this week. Well, selective blindness <laughs> can also happen too, where you're like, "Ooh, ooh, let's look at all the nerfs for things I don't play." Yeah, they suck. I'll be fine. Not not shade at fan, by the way. It's shade at people who blindly just re reiterate things that fan says without fans' oh. talent. Oh, and we just talked about it. Like Vala does suck when the Zera tool is GM amazing. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, uh, learn Zara. We should go back to me f five years ago, apparently, when I was playing Zara Tool. Kyle was recently going through old VODs of Into the Nexus After Show games, and apparently I played a lot of Zara Tool for a hot second. You were, you were really good. I, mean, I great legitimately don't remember this, is the wild part. That's how long I've been playing this game. I legitimately don't remember going through a Zara Tool phase. I think it's a little like, you know, the Wright brothers getting in an airplane and calling yourself a, a Boeing flyer now. Like just, there's way more buttons than there were back in 2016. <laughs> fair, fair. All right, Kyle, you were really afraid of Junkrat. I haven't seen a single Junkrat this nope. week. Have you? No, nope. there are way sexier things in the Nexus right now than Junkrat. Yeah, frag, frag launcher's damage was increased by 5%. We got some underpick talent love. That, that's about it. And that, well, Big As did get an additional functionality. Steel traps only hit heroes. That's kind of interesting. Uh, that is up against a number of sort of meta talents for Junkrat. Where are you at, Junkrat? Here you are. Uh, that would be up against uh, Sticky Wicket, the talent that silences. Mm -hmm. So do you think this wasn't enough 
it's not Junkrat's meta, or we need time to figure out where he fits. I think that compared to Vala being our gold standard at the moment for ease of use, Junkrat is way too much work. And I think people are going to have to go through that process of Vala to Falstad to Raynor, and then they might eventually say, oh, okay, let me get back to Junkrat. And even then, I feel like because of the setup time and the traps and kind of the tower defense management of those traps and sight and whatnot, a lot of Junkrat players just play Chromie because it's easier than Junkrat. That's fair. I was about to ask, so if, well, if uh, if Vala isn't that good in, in pro games, what are we going to see in CCL? Let, let, listen, you just listened to me for, what, 20 minutes of this show, rail on about how much work I put into Hogger, and he was OP. Like, there was every reason for me to put work into it. I am not going to bust my buns to learn Junkrat unless he's absolutely owning it. <laughs> fair. Uh, and then finally, Tassadar getting a little love. The uh, baseline shock rays channel duration has been reduced. It is a really ugly fraction of a second, but it's a uh, slightly more than 8% reduction on that channel duration, which I'm super stoked about. feels a little snappier. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And some nice little augments too. Like you might do your shadow walk that has increased armor now from 25 to 35. Um, I still feel like Tassadar has, pitfalls in his talent build that might need to be addressed such as the auto attack build augmenting into archon and then there's kind of this weird this weird in between where you can really feel like your tasks are made the wrong build but i can see how that's so seductive in a sort of illidan i won before kind of way so you do that build again so seductive i'm i'm, I'm not sold on tasks at the moment it's a lot of standing still though like and that that might be the, the the crux of it for me is I I just can't afford to stand still. And I got to interview Funds this last week, who played Kira in an amazing game of CCL. And he said he basically doesn't do Kira Q talents because it's way too expensive in tournament play to stand still while your sword goes. Broop, broop. So, in that same way, anything that causes Tassadar to stand still, which is his primary ability, is just a hazard. It's always been really risky, right? His damage so good, though. It, like this, yeah. I think there's this still. It, it, it obviously it comes down to the draft. I think you're gonna you're, you're gonna see openings, and I think it's worth taking that opening. I don't think he's inherently bad because he stands still, but I think he is very limited in what games he can he can really shine in as a result of the fact that he has to stand still. I'm I'm gonna show my hand here. I'm gonna reveal my secret Tassadar strat, Garrett. Have you been holding out on me this whole time? Yes. Well, no, you're an you've ass. never seen it because no, you're great. No, that, oh. I'm not an ass. I'm not an ass because you're I called you an ass. You called me great. This is, this isn't like us in a, in a, in a, in a distilled form. I don't know what, what is it? No, I, I only draft Tassadar when I think the draft is so bad that I don't want to be responsible for the loss. <laughs> because the, wait, I've that seen you, wait, wait, I've seen you play Tassadar on Patreon games. Okay, Garrett. Oh, back! I want to see this back paddle. paddle. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm going to get comfortable. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I stand by it. The Tassadar. I'm going to need a lot of CC in front of me. I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss my shots because you guys didn't CC enough for me. I'm very squishy. I'm vulnerable. He is to me the perfect hero to play when I just don't want to feel responsible because I'm like well, I miss because everybody else sucks. Uh, they didn't stand the storms because the seats, the tank didn't know how to CC. Like I walk out of there scot free with a perfectly good damage number because storm did fine damage anyway. Like it's it's nice, it's relaxed. It's like playing Abathur, you know. I didn't have any good clone targets. It wasn't a good monstrosity map. Like ah, uh, it's not my fault. Get on your knees and tell me you love me. <laughs> uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I he's mean, fun to is... play. He is fun, and uh, that. That fun is why I often take it in patron games when I'm not sure we're going to win. But mm -hmm. I just want to have a bit of mm -hmm. shocking fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see how it is. You have no faith. You have no faith in our in our three mage comp. I get it. It's not that I don't have faith. <laughs> it's just that magic missiles take a lot more work to aim. 
Well, now, now we now we know everyone. If you're watching Kyle's stream or in in Patreon games, if we see a Tassadar, we know Kyle. That's 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 Kyle on down low going. This game is hopeless. I'm I'm expecting to lose, but I'm gonna have a bit of fun on a relaxing hero where nothing's my fault. Mm. Fair enough. Except for do, walls. If my walls suck, that's on me. Like we, that's we also a ram uh, half of the games on Patreon nights, and oh my god, I love Tassadar and an a ram. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a good time. And walls sign are, me walls up. Are blast. It's a good time. It's a good time. And so was the show, but I, th- I think I think we're at the end of it. That, Tassadar was the final hero. We did it. Yeah. Again, man, I'm going to say, like, overall, I like this I like this patch. I, I don't think it's the sexiest of patches because it's, like, outside of the reworks, it's nerfing overperforming heroes, which is never, like, super exciting because, like, if you're currently playing, you're probably playing one of the heroes that got nerfed, if not multiples. But I, it, it, we needed it. I think this is really the patch we needed. Yeah, and I think that uh, the the lasting impact of taking out the major bruisers or at least knocking them down and getting rid of lane clear Johanna is is going to cause a meta shift, but it's going to be so slow and it's going to be unrecognizable. I mean, we're going to have to look back on it and be like, oh, yeah, you know, the iPhone changed everything. (laughs) Yeah, I also think it's a really good time because like we we talk about this every time, like when patches when new patches come out. Uh, you know, seasonal players return. Like if your friends are back, yeah. I think now is a really good time listeners at home for your friends to come back. The things that were maybe keeping them down before, like these, it's these one trick hoggers and, and people like me on Sonia, we've been reined in. Now you need to worry about the Vala, but it's just, it's really it, like, to me at the moment, my takeaway from this week is like for us mortals there's really just one hero. We really, really, really need to look out for and it's Vala. And that, we can handle that. We can deal with that. There's a lot of questions now still. We waited a long time between patches. Not, not as long as other Blizzard games, but we waited still, by, by hero standards, we waited a long time between patches. We may have to wait that same amount of time. So if Vala really does stand the test of time and ends up being as powerful as she feels this first week, we're going to be living in that reality for a very long time. But if that's it, there's plenty of bans for one Vala. That ain't so bad. And even then, like, remember the real heyday of Junkrat? That brought about an Artanis meta. As weird as that was, using Space Laser to cause a Junkrat to die while he was channeling his tire became the best thing on the planet. So this could bring about Zeratul metas, CC metas. Vari- Varian's actually really good in Devala because you're blocking all those autos. And you're the only thing she can really aim at and often in those sort of groups. So things are going to change, but it's going to be a little slow. And for now... Yeah, we're all going to be feeling the reign of Vala. The reign of vengeance, if you will. Mm. I like it. I like it. Good title, that. The reign of vengeance? Yeah. Let's, 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 let's put it up there. Let's put it up there, and let's put this episode to bed. If you want to be a part of Into the Nexus, you want to write in, and we are done analyzing this patch. We're going to have plenty of time to take your questions. Do so at itncast at gmail.com. Reminder that we're having Jay Howe on next week. I'm sure he's going to tell you his opinions, but if you want to specify the opinion you want to know from Jay Howe, write in itncast at gmail.com. If you are a patron, skip the inbox entirely. Just go ahead and drop us a message there in the Discord. And speaking of our patrons, uh, not only are we very, very thankful for your support, but uh, if, if you want to become one and uh, support us, check it out, patreon.com slash itncast. N. That's where you can go, and uh, seriously, every little bit helps. Uh, also, huge thanks to our Patreon producers, Declan H, Cheesy Bob, Chris K, Mike C, Sean B, and C. Michael R, our latest producer. Thank you very much again, dude. Um, other than that, we're live Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern time right here on twitch.tv slash TV. You can go to that Twitch channel. You can go ahead and follow it, and you'll know when we go live. You should also follow the show on Twitter at ITNCast to know when we're going live or when we have... Uh, schedule changes. I've been retweeting Kyle's VODs, which I have been appearing in. So you should go watch that. And speaking of Kyle's VODs, dude, where can people find them? You can find me over at kyleferguson.com, twitch.tv slash kyleferguson, youtube.com slash kyleferguson. But I get to do some really, really cool interviews for the CCL. Not only the player interviews during their halftime show on the weekends, I get to do replay reviews where I sit down with the player and go over why they're so darn good at that particular hero. And this last weekend, I got to do Kira, 
which is a real delight to see some of the inner workings there. You should go check that out at youtube.com slash heroes hearth. I can be found at Garrett Art on Twitter. That's G-A-R-R-E-T-T-A-R-T. That is my Twitter handle. Give me a follow on there. Uh, other than that, I can be found at amove.tv for this podcast and every single other one that I produce. We had a really fun Angry Chicken this week. I laughed my butt off while we talked about uh, the big patch that Hearthstone just got. They just nerfed some cards in Standard, buffed some cards in Standard, and also nerfed Quillbore in Battlegrounds. Um, they're still quite good. It really just comes down to that uh, that gem mechanic, the blood gems. Um, there's really not... It's a plus one, plus one. They, they, it's not heroes, Kyle. We can't do fractional number nerfs. It's whole numbers only. So if you got, you got something that's working and it's plus one, plus one, what the hell are you going to do? So Quillbore is still good, but I think the other, other, uh, the other minion types, the other tribes are... Uh, you can still win a lobby with them, especially post-nerf. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that, go check out the Angry Chicken wherever podcasts can be found. No instance this week as uh, both Scott Johnson and myself are traveling. I'm going to Formula Drift tomorrow, Kyle. I can't wait. Nice. I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's been, uh, been a, something Katie, Katie and I went to one like randomly back in 2016. Just had a blast. And we've been every year since. So last year when it was canceled because of obvious reasons, it just felt wrong. It's all wrong. So I'm going to have a lovely weekend inhaling too many burning tires uh, with my wife. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Follow me on uh, Instagram. Uh, Check my Twitter. It's on there. It's going to do it. It's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, for listening. However you get it, we're glad you're getting it. And uh, good luck and have fun in your games this weekend, everybody. Take care.